Hello and welcome to the Strong Suit Podcast, where we focus on the people part of your business. Every Tuesday and Thursday, I interview a world-class expert on talent and recruiting so that you can build a company filled with rock stars. And I'm always pumped when I have a guest on the show who is not only an accomplished executive, not only an entrepreneur, a recovering entrepreneur in this case, not only a longtime friend, uh, but, but a fellow classmate from Kellogg and a bunch of other places, Andy Cohen. How are you, Andy? Great, Jeff. Glad to be here. Let me share with people just a little bit about your perspective, and then we're going to spend the next 20 minutes talking about building a high-performance sales organization. Arguably one of the hardest recruiting challenges there is. You're doing it in the heart of Silicon Valley, which makes it even harder uh, for just a phenomenal company. But let me just share your perspective. So Andy's been at this for about 25 years, growing companies. Uh, and he is the SVP of sales at Bill.com, which is one of the fastest growing companies in Silicon Valley. Uh, before that, he started and sold Caring.com, which went on to become the top online destination for uh, parents who are caring for their parents or for aging parents. Sold the company after building it to about 150 people. Before that, his, his bio is like the who's who of, of Silicon Valley. Uh, Intuit, where we first met, uh, Peapod, Instill, Success Factors. The list is, is uh, pretty incredible. But Andy uh, has really div thought a lot about how to build a scalable sales organization. That's what we're going to talk about for the next 20 minutes. So thanks for joining us, Andy. It's great to see you. Great to be here. Why don't we start with um, just 60 seconds on, on Bill.com. This is about a 350-person company, but why don't you give a, a quick overview of what the business is and, and maybe some size and scale. Yeah, so Bill.com is, is, is sort of the PayPal for, for business. Most uh, consumers do online bill pay through their banks. Most small and medium-sized businesses, surprisingly, still write checks. Wow. And Bill.com helps eliminate that paper and all the time it takes to open an envelope, process a check, and it in your accounting software. We do all that using OCR technology and a software app that makes approvals easy. Uh, the manual paper bill is about $50 a bill and, and one or two people doing it. With Bill.com, it's about uh, $5 a bill and, and you don't need those people. So we have hundreds of thousands of small and medium-sized businesses using it to pay their bills. Uh, we're moving $5 billion a month in bill payments. Was that $5 billion with a B? $5 billion, $60 billion a year. Wow. Uh, we are the largest ACH network in the country, and we're saving small and medium-sized businesses just tons of time and money. And, and you know, the, the, the quick ROI is you have an AP clerk that you spend $50,000 a year on with Bill.com. You can have that person do something else and spend $2,000 a year on Bill.com. Got it. So this routes it all the, through, through my company. I can handle all the approvals or, or not, yeah. not approvals. It integrates with QuickBooks, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. And, it's, you know, when you're on vacation, you just pull up your phone, you see the invoice, you approve the bill. You don't have to be in the office signing checks. So it liberates executives as well as saving a lot of time and money. Great. And it's more secure, too. So now that we've got that context, and since you talk about liberation, <laughs> many of our listeners are building a business or they're investors in a business um, or they run sales. And as I said earlier, building a sales team is not an easy task. Your sales team is roughly how large now? We have uh, 55 people in sales. Got it, 55 people. It's not the first sales team you've built obviously over the course of your career. And I'd love to sh have you share with people kind of what you've learned along the way, what's worked, what hasn't worked, what mistakes you made, what best practices they might learn from. I, I guess a good place to start is why it's so hard. My, my perspective is it's difficult because by nature, a lot of sales reps are really good talkers and they do a great job in the interview uh, where confirmation bias, we kind of want to fall in love with them and then we look for information to support that and then we really didn't do a great job assessing them. They start on the job and we find, oh, we didn't get much of a sales rep at all. Is that... Why do you think it's hard to hire sales reps? Well, I think salespeople are entrepreneurs and they want to run their own business. They're um, very confident by nature and they want to make a lot of money, which is why they're in sales. So getting the right fit between that ambition and raw energy and then someone that's going to stick around um, and, and become productive and stay, that's the hard part for me. So, you know, it's there's a lot of people that are 
are just super talented that want, if they're not making where they want to be in six months, they'll, they'll bounce to the next place. A lot of salespeople, excuse me. And so I think the art on building a team is building a sustainable team where you can provide people a good path and you can get tenure because when salespeople pay out is not the first year, it's the second year, the third year, the fourth year. So right. if you're getting people one and done in a year, you know, it does, it's not good for college basketball. It's not good for sales teams either. You're going to spend all this money on recruiting and training. And then just when they're productive, they're out the door. So right. I spent a lot of time at both at both caring.com, the company I started and bill.com uh, that was uh, started 10 years ago. Um, I've spent the last two years rebuilding the sales team here and a lot of time on career pathing so they can get people in that are going to have tenure and build up their, their capacity to be effective salespeople because the one, in, the one and done is just really hard on a sales team. So what I hear you saying is even before we focus on recruiting great salespeople, we really got to think about retention of great salespeople. It's all about that. It's all okay. about that. So what if, when you get in the psyche of a sales rep, inside sales, outside sales, sales manager, what is most important to them? Obviously, pe people would say, well, money, of course, and, and that's part of it. But beyond money, what are the things that you've learned really resonate with the, the high performance sales reps? We don't care about the bottom performers, but the top well, ones. Salespeople are competitive and they want to win. So giving people opportunities to win. But what um, does that look like? Give it well, that, looks, that looks like giving them a quota that they can reach. And I think you know, the rule of thumb on, on quota is a, a high-performing team. You want 60, 75% of people on quota. Um, you don't on want, quota meaning hitting quota. Hitting quota. Hitting, yeah. Okay. Hitting quota. So you know, I think that's one of the things a lot of CEOs don't always understand. Right. They think they're overpaying reps. But you're not going to have a sales team if 25% are on quota. So as a sales leader, a lot of your job is to build a plan and quotas that are attainable so that reps can win. And two thirds is a good guideline for that in your experience. That's what I've always used. I've always used that because I, when I came here, you know, there were a dozen reps, and none of them were, on, were hitting their plan. The CSO was like, "Salespeople suck," and it wasn't a winning culture. And so, fast forward a couple of years, I've got two thirds of the people on quota, and and it is a winning culture. And I and that is as much about the rep as it is about the 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 plan, right? Well, how much was it when you first joined? How much was it that the plan was not realistic? It was it was a lot that. But it, all, it was also interesting because I, I got people to be winners and hit their quota and then was able to take the quota up and they were able to rise up because they already had a winning mentality. Okay. So, but if people are dispirited, taking the quota up is not going to help. Got it. Okay. What are the things that have you learned along the way, aside from money, that are important to top performing sales reps that drives so, retention? And Jeff, I did not say money. I, I said winning. Yeah, I understand. No, but money is important, right? We can't no, no, we can't deny that. Important. You just have to you just have to play market, right? So I don't think yeah. that's uh, that's not an option in today's environment. You, yep. Reps know what market is. You have to pay market. Okay. But beyond that, yep. I mean, every in salespeople, there's a OTE, the on target earnings. Yep. A lot of people don't hit their OTE. So at Bill.com, one of the things that's important to me is, hey, you can come here. We're going to have an OTE, and and it's not a fictional OTE. It's yep. not yep. one or two guys hit OTE, or right? One or two, it's two thirds. thirds. Yep, two thirds. So and, that's part of it. And have but you before is, you move on? Have you have you learned the optimal mix of fixed versus variable to uh, to hit the OTE total? You know, and market is mostly 50, 50, 50 base, fifty uh, variable, and so that's what we do here. Okay, um, I've seen I've seen less leveraged, and and I haven't seen more leverage than fifty fifty. I've seen less leverage. Than yeah, 50. got it. Okay. But I, I like that, and that's the plan I'm on. I mean, I, I like it. My managers are on it. Um, uh, I think all the way up and down, it's what makes sales fun. Yeah. You've got skin in the game, and, you know, you got to hit the number. And I think if everybody, my sales ops people are, are leveraged, my uh, managers are leveraged, my lead gen people are leveraged. So it's, it's everybody on the team has got the same goal, which is another, another important aspect. Make sure Alignment, that everybody, right? Um, yeah, you don't. You know, MBOs are great, but for salespeople, I, you know, I, my opinion, they just want to be in control of their own destiny and they want it all in the number. They don't want a lot of um, uh, complicated formulas they have to hit or MBOs or non-number things. They just want to tell me what I need to do, give me my territory, my accounts, and I will go make it happen. Got it. And so the clean, making that a clear path is important too. And so beyond the, the winners, winning is, you know, learning. Right. I, everybody I hire 
I, I tell them, hey, I'm going to make you money and I'm going to give you a career path so you can be a VP of sales. So how do you do that? You know, you, you, you learn how to prospect, you learn how to manage smaller accounts, you learn how to, to manage larger accounts, you learn how to manage manager, uh, reps, you learn how to manage managers. So the other metric I track very carefully is how many people I'm able to promote every year. And so this year, you know, we were able to promote eight people on the team, um, both to the senior reps and managers. And so that's, so, so my pitch is I'm going to, I'm going to help you win to hit your number. You're going to, you're going to, your OT is real. And then I'm going to help you be a VP of sales. I want you guys all to be VPs and gals to be VPs of sales. The way you describe it, it sounds like you spend a lot of time recruiting. What, what percent of your time are you spending interviewing, hiring, recruiting? Yeah, it's probably, um, it's probably a third of my time. Wow. It's the most important thing. So you could, you probably tell me I should spend more than a third of my time. No, right? that's, that's, that's pretty good. 30% is, is that's but, good. But I'm also always looking for talent. If I'm in the Verizon store upgrading my phone, I'm, I'm assessing the person. When I'm on the plane, I'm assessing the person. I'm uh, wherever I go, I'm looking for sales talent. And, and what are you looking for? What are the characteristics that, that you find consistently in these top performers? You mentioned competitive and they want to win, but what else comes to mind? Yeah, I think it's, it's people that are, are, um, have drive, right? It's all about, I mean, as you know, Jeff, because you've been in sales, you're getting rejected 99% of the time. So you've got to be a real persistent SOB to be good in sales. Yeah. And so you can't take no for an answer. You have, to, you have to dog it. And I think attitude and perseverance are the two most important things. So I'm looking for that. I'm looking like, are they hungry? Are they um, just hired a, a VP of sales who's great for running our direct team? He sold, he sold door to door. He went to UC Santa Barbara, so he was a polished guy. Yeah. And during college, he sold, he sold door to door. I mean, that's that you have so much resilience if you're able to do that. You can do something like that. You can, you can, do, you can do just about anything. So that's what I'm looking for, people that have the, the sort of the moxie and the hustle and the persistence. You can teach them the product. You can teach yeah. them the industry. Yeah. Got but it. you can't teach them that. Yep. Um, you can't teach them the DNA. You can't teach them the, 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 the moxie and the hustle. I think you've got to come with that. And if you bring that here, we'll, we'll, we'll train you up. We'll make sure you're a winner and we'll, we'll promote you. You know, you're going to be, hopefully if you're doing a good job every year, you're going to be able to move into a bigger job. Now you mentioned promotions. So one of the issues that I see a lot with clients is they take their best sales rep and promote them to manager. It could be a district manager, a telesales manager or something. And they fail miserably because it's such a different job. I mean, it's, it's, you would think sales rep to sales manager, ah, it's kind of the same thing times 10, but the things you're spending time doing every day actually are pretty different. How have you learned to enable that transition successfully so that most of the promotions work? Cause at most companies they don't. Yeah. I, I would not say I have cracked the code there. I, I, I'm just thinking on my team, I've got, um, a couple that have worked out and a couple that haven't worked out. So I'm probably 50, 50 on that. What, what, um, what was the difference between the one that worked and didn't? Um, I think the ones that didn't probably thought it was their path to making more money, um, more easily. Mm -hmm. And I think the others were looking at it more, you know, I want to learn from it. Career. So I, think, I think, um, because if you're, if you're a top rep, you're going to make as much, if not more than your manager. You should be making more than your manager. Right, right. right. So if you're doing it because you think you need it for the money, that's probably the wrong reason. If you're doing it because you want to be a VP of sales and you know you have to be a manager first, um, that's the right reason. Right. And so, you know, and, and then people are always, often disappointed. They get promoted to manager. And I've had a couple of cases where they've made less money because they're not, they were crushing their quota. And now they've got a team quota and they're carrying people that aren't crushing their quota. Yeah, right. So, so I've had that conversation. It's like, yeah, you're not, this isn't the way to maximize money in the short term. <laughs> But in the long term, it is because if you're a VP of sales, you're going to get, you know, good comp package, you're going to get a good equity chunk and you can't be there without being a manager. You, you, you said your team is 55 and you've had, I'm sure, others that have come and perhaps didn't work out. What have you learned both at Bill.com and previously about how long to give a rep before you know we made a mistake? Yeah, it's, it's, that's the hardest, the hardest thing of being a sales leader is figuring that out because you like all your team, right? For sure, you've hired people that you like. Sure. And then you've invested in them for a year. And so you're, you're not only um, admitting that they're not good, you're admitting you're not a good hirer. So it's super, super hard to throw in the towel on people. Um, but for us, we have a, we have a whole uh, range. I've got, 
a team of lead gen guys. I've got a team of people that are selling contracts worth 2000 a month, all the way up to a team that are selling deals at 2 million. Which is a longer sales cycle, obviously. Yeah, I'm sorry, 2000 a year to 2 million longer sales cycle. So the more comp, the larger sales, slower sales cycles, you have to give the reps more time. The more transactional sales cycles, you can tell a lead gen person in 90 days. Got on it. my small business people, I can tell in 90 days. On my enterprise folks, you know, it's, it's a year probably. Wow. Yeah. Can you, can you ever tell them less than, can, can you ever tell them less than 90 days? Um, I think I know, and I've been wrong. I've had people prove me wrong that I, I thought weren't going to make it and have. Um, so one of the things, you know, I think it's, it's, you want to make the quick call, but I think you, it's so hard to find people, especially in this market. I think you I are going to do more damage deciding too quickly than too slowly. Got it. Let's talk about the assessment process. So you're at the cellular store, you find a great prospective candidate or on the airplane. Tell us a little about what the your trade shows. trade shows are the best place to recruit, right? Trade shows. Really? I love going to trade shows. I walk booth to booth. Tell me, give me your pitch. What are you doing? How long you've been there? You having a good time? How's the company? Yeah. Like trade shows to me are, are, that's the best thing I get out of it. It's like a smorgasbord of sales reps, right? All the reps, right? Yeah. And, and you can hear them give their pitch and you can, you know, see, see them in action. Once you get them engaged, how do you assess them? Tell us a little about either the interviews or whatever it is between finding them and making an offer. Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, again, it ranges whether they're, I've got entry level people. We've got, we've got guys just out of guys and gals just out of school that have no work experience. So I'm trying to, did they work at all yep. during college and were they hustling up to, you know, tell me about some, some large deals that you've sold. So it, it is by team, but I'm just looking for the proof points of persistence. But if anybody's had more than five years of selling, then it's backdoor reference. I, I really want to hear somebody that's worked with them and says they're, they're not, they're not going to burn your company down and they can sell. And so uh, the more senior, the more I rely on backdoor references, the more junior, I'm just looking for character. And DNA and, and the raw characteristics. Yeah. But, but for senior folks, yeah. you know, it's all, it's, it's the, the great thing about LinkedIn is, you know, you're, you are less than, if you're not directly connected, you're second connected. Yeah. And you can really get the scoop on people. And so that's what I also tell sales people when they come and go, it's like, look, this is, make sure you um, give, if you're going to leave, do it right because this is a very small world. Yeah. Someone's going to call me one day, right? Someone's call me. So like, give me, you know, I'm, I'm fine. If you find a great opportunity, you want to go chase, but don't burn the bridge, give two weeks notice, be a professional. Um, and I've had that, I've had that talk, you know, with a couple of guys. Have you had people not give two weeks notice? Oh yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, I think young reps, especially they don't know. Yeah. And they think, Oh, if I give notice, they're going to walk me out the door and I won't get uh, uh, credit for that deal or, or whatever. And so I'm like, hey, just, just let me give you some advice. Don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> because, I'll pay your money. I'm not out to screw you. Right. right. But, but even if, if nine times out of 10, you won't get screwed, maybe one time out of 10, you will, but it's not worth it because those nine times you're going to just totally screw over the, the team and you don't want to, you don't want to go out that way. Got it. But um, if your company, it's also, it's, it's on the companies. I mean, if companies have policies of screwing salespeople and not paying out, they're going to get that behavior. So sure. I think it's a two-way street. And it'll become self-policing with things like Glassdoor, where people, you know, candidates will know, hey, watch out, this company is going to try to screw you. Yeah, and um, in this market, you can't, you can't do that. So you mentioned interviews, and you mentioned reference checks. Anything else in, in the vetting process that you're looking at? Um. You know, I just multiple eyes on it. I want, I want, I want all sorts of people to talk to them. I don't. I have um, after twenty five years, um, I've made so many mistakes. I don't. I don't trust myself. I know it's going to be fifty fifty, and so I want. I want to get more eyes on people. I want to get more opinions, and then I'm also, you know, I'll cut my losses. I, I, I don't. It's um, you know, when you, if you play golf and you think you're good, you you're miserable. But if you think you're you're not, you can have a good time. I'm like yeah. that or not. Like, I know I'm going to be 50, 50, yeah. <laughs> not a problem. I'm going to fix it. Do you, do you, are, are you being literal when you say 50, 50? Yeah. Yeah. I'm 50, 50 and I've been doing it for 25 years. Doesn't that ever bum you out that that's the, that's, that's, I, the, that's the end, end goal. But I don't know which 50. I don't know. <laughs> which 50. So no, it doesn't, it, you know, it is what it is, Jeff. Yeah. Good point. Uh, before we wrap up one last question or one last topic, which is, activity level and 
selling stages. So I assume you use a CRM system of some sort. Salesforce.com. I've heard of Salesforce.com. Um, no, it's now Salesforce, excuse me. Oh, it's sorry, it. Salesforce. And that means you guys are Bill? We are still Bill.com, but, but we'll answer to Bill. If you write us a check, you can write to Bill or Bill.com. I <laughs> got it. What do you do if you have a rep who's crushing it, but doesn't track anything in Salesforce.com? So uh, well, we just, we don't pay on it. So you have to, you have to use Salesforce here. So give some color on what that means to people that don't know. Yeah. So it's, it's, um, deals get closed out and get, you get quota credit when you've closed it out as a closed one in Salesforce. So it's, it's, we have a very strict, you know, process for, um, contracts. And so it's all through Salesforce. We use outreach as an add on to Salesforce for our lead cadence. We use Lean Data for data cleaning. We use LinkedIn Navigator for background, and then we use Salesforce. So that's that's our tech stack, and gotcha. and everybody's using that for all all stages of the sales cycle. And the reason that you do that may sound like a silly question, but for 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 other folks who have the philosophy, well, I, you know, I, I as long as they're making the number, I don't care if they use the CRM system or not. Why do you do that? You don't have that philosophy because you're you're you. I think you, it's a slippery slope. You're either all in or you're not in, and we're all in. So it's an expectation to get your salary. You got to be using Salesforce.com. It's a requirement. Got and, it. and we actually have let people go that that couldn't keep couldn't work the tech stack, even if they were making their numbers. Uh, yeah, yeah. After a few months, that's one of the one of our early things. If you're not going to get up speed on the tech stack, you're out. Great. It's a great discipline. Andy, congratulations on building a, what sounds like a great sales team at a great fast growing Silicon Valley company. Uh, how can people learn more about bill.com or get in touch? Yeah. Well, if they are writing checks or um, approving checks, they should come to bill.com and get a free trial. It will really change their lives. I was a customer at caring.com. I was one of the early customers of bill.com and um, we sold the company and I said, well, whatever you do, don't, don't screw this up. Bill.com. <laughs> you, you don't, you don't want to lose this. So yeah. um, if you're not using it. Um, a, it's a free trial and B, if you're not happy in three months, call me. I'll give your money back. I guarantee you are going to love it. It's great. Yeah. Great. You're a believer. Thank I'm you not. so much. Thanks for, make, for making the time and congratulations on, on, yet another, uh, on yet another success story. All right. Thanks, Jeff.